it's um, interesting to be in a room with mostly people I don't really know. So, um, so I'm going to tell you my life story in poetry. Um, I'm actually, um, uh, so I was in a car accident two years ago and um, broke a bunch of bones and was, you know, sort of dramatically told maybe I wouldn't walk again and all that stuff. And, um, and I didn't, you know, I just sort of ignored them. Um, and I would, you know, and it, it's like when you have a lot of trauma and pain, your body does all these really kind of amazing things, you know, it, it, your body knows more or less how to heal, you know, I mean, yes, with a lot of intervention and a lot of like, uh, poles that are down my legs too, but, but, um, uh, it just, you know, it just, I, I, it allowed me to forget a lot of the pain and mostly remember that, you know, like I had, I got to rest, you know, people came to visit me. I didn't have to go anywhere because I was in bed. I couldn't leave the bed. You know, I had I had meals. You know, so I I just I think about that a lot as as a lot. Of, I see a lot of friends being stressed out about life, and and um, I think for the first time in my life, I'm not stressed out. I may not be making a whole lot of money, um, but I'm kind of you know chill and peaceful and trying to figure it out. And, you know, some people are working on, like, being in the present moment. I'm like, that's all I know how to do. I don't really know how to plan for the future anymore. Like, I used to have, like, five-year plans. Um, so, you know, sometimes I worry about that. But um, so here's, um, you know, when you were talking about writing about grief, a lot of people also were like, oh, you're going to have so much to write about, you know? <laughs> I was like, I didn't write about shit. I, I took pictures of, 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 you know, my friend's dog. Like, I took, like, 300 pictures, like, and that dog was just willing to, like, pose and everything, <laughs> you know? But I had hoped I'd be, like, Frida, you know, like, drawing or, like, writing my life. Anyways, when I finally was able to write uh, one piece, this, this is what came out. So it's called um, Learning How to Drive. Learn to drive when you're 14 because your friends drink too much and you want to get home safely. Practice driving early in the morning in your friend's car before anyone is on the flat road around rose bushes, brick flower beds. There should be a speed bump there as you count how many pets you've lost to those careening around the corner. Practice driving stick around the neighborhood and pretend you've never been in the car seat when your father attempts to teach you at 15 and a half. Mom's turn includes her leg reaching over from the passenger side over to the brake. <laughs> Actually learn to drive on a tractor when you're 12 years old visiting a farm somewhere in Washington State. Learn to drive a boat off the coast of California when you're eight. Drive slowly, drive fast, stall at red lights, drive flight simulators and car video games, dream of driving as a declaration of independence, drive in a foreign country where road signs are just a suggestion. Break 36 bones in your body in a head-on collision, a road you've carefully traced before, seeing your mother's phone number when you wake up as they are dragging you out of your car onto the concrete. When a man peering over you says, you're going to be fine, repeat over and over, I'm going to be fine, I'm going to be fine, I'm going to be fine, until you black out. Wake up to a woman in a helmet slamming a helicopter door shut. Or is it sliding? Or am I swimming? The man peers over you again and says, you're going to be fine. You are wrapped up tightly on a gurney. You can't feel your body like a floating head atop a warm loaf of bread. You repeat, I'm going to be fine, and slur the words, do you want to know my mama's phone number? As you repeat her number over and over, a warm liquid rushes through you, and you black out again. Wake up with a mask over your nose and mouth, a tube down your throat, lights bright. Am I a cyborg? Can I breathe on my own? Remember the look on the faces of people who see you for the first time. Something must be terribly wrong with my face, you think. A cop with aggressive questions. Yes, I'll breathe in, check my levels, record my zeros. You know this will be important. Remember the bright lights. Is this what the end looks like? Two glowing saucers, eye level coming at your head. Slam brakes. Your legs feel as if they busted through the bottom of your car like Flintstone brakes except heels and femurs and tibias and tarsals break instead. Think, oh no, this can't be happening. How can I stop what is happening? Seconds? Less than even one? 36 bones you repeat months later several times into the phone. The bones can heal stronger. 36, can I just get my pain medicine? Wait 36 minutes, the one the doctor said I needed. 
said medically necessary, no previous history of addiction, no previous history of 36 bones. Can you make the ninja knives slashing, the electric creepy crawlies jumping, stabbing, stop for a little? The frame that holds your body can be stronger by being broken. The squishy middle wrapped around the frame. We must deal with the structure first, even though I know it hurts. On a scale of one to 10, how's your pain? Oh, an 11? Give no easy answers to impatient questions. Curious strangers want to know, want you to live, relive your horror to satisfy for their benefit. Every be careful becomes a, see, I told you so. Don't ask unless you can handle the next few years of holding and hearing what it's like. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so this piece uh, is called Church at Night, and it is for uh, Orlando. Um, and it's just, you know, it, some of the, the lines to me kind of mess me up over and over again because there's just, you know, so many shootings and things happening. And, you know, maybe we're just more aware of it. There's definitely more bodies, you know, a, a building body count and, um, you know. It's just, it's really intense because it's not like people don't get killed or, or shot every single day. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's sort of all of these things happening. We can't help but those of us who are kind of like think that there's metaphors everywhere or symbols or, you know, or, or screaming, you know, like the earth is screaming at us. Um, it's trying to tell us something, but here I'm just trying to tell some stories. So church at night. Every time I think of Orlando, I mean Orlando with extra Spanish flourish, an ornate word to decorate, to trim, to edge. Paintings on a map mark bloody conquest stories. In La Florida, a flourish is missing the most colorful of its flowers, so many now without a pulse. The beat remains while they beat our remains, some for political gain, our thoughts and prayers, but nothing else are with you. Let's play smear the queer so you know what happens lifeless after a night set aside for the truly living. In your cutest jeans, once the worst of your fears, will I get my life tonight? Not that your death might be your coming out story or that your last selfie would be used to identify you by family across borders who loved you and depended on you because documents even matter in the afterlife. A night out in the open because others had danced and defied and rioted. Heels and bricks against pigs with nightsticks, paddy wagons and little dicks on power trips, getting off on just doing our job, keep the peace. They fought so that we could feel free, however brief, to get our life, la vida, en el ambiente, con la familia, and pulse, mis nenes, chulos, locas, hermosos. When I heard your names, I could barely catch my breath. The Anthonys, the Frankies, the Giancarloses, the Amandas, the Martinez, the Luises, the Mercedes, the Marisols, the Enriques. Brown boys, grown men, girls and women floating on the gender spectrum, family and friends hanging out with the children of the night. The Simons, the Gilbertos, the Javiers, the Oscars, the Miguel Ángeles, the Jorges, the Joels, mostly 20-year-olds, barely experienced enough to fear anything. Proudly sissy boys, beefcakes, bears, butches, and fabulous femmes. The Jasons, the Corys, the Juans, the Shanes, the Ramons, the Brendas, the Stanleys, the Rodolfos, the Antonios. Gorditas y flaquitas, puercos, perras, putas y jotas, machas y maripositas. The Darrells, the Tevins, the Diancas, the Leroys, the Peters, the Pauls, the Franks, the Yilmaris, the Jonathans, the Kimberleys, the Edwards, the Rardos, the Angels. Trans girls, maricones, drag queens, club kids, lightning on the dance floor. The Eddies, the Akiras, the Christophers, the Rardos, the Erics. School girls, businessmen, loyal husbands, bartenders, DJs, and go-go dancers. Without 401ks, pension plans, or health care. Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, Salvadorans, Afro-Latinos. I think of every gay bar and the rare surviving dyke bars with their once-a-month if we're lucky, once a week, Latin music nights. 
the noche de queer cumbias, the placitas, the pan dulces, las escuelitas, the mangos, la bota loca, the butters, the circus arena, wet, cuchilicious, splash. Some decorated like a year-round quinceañera, some small like dancing in someone's living room. Executive suites, esta noche, chuparrosa, papi chulo, the boss, pulse, and, and, what was that one for lesbians that was at the flower market in San Francisco once a month? Ah, yes, canela, with those old school mujeres that have been together for years, where we made out in the bathroom that one time as if we were teenagers because we never got to be romantic queer teens. Do you remember the names of your first gay bars, house parties, tea at early afternoon tea dances, and, a spe and special POC or Latinx nights? How we'd meet up to get ready, a few drinks before entry, to save our dollars for tacos. Oh, uh, uh, drinks before, to save our dollars for tacos, to soak up the nightlife in our belly. With each precious face on the screen, I am right back in every club and every small town and big city where I have loved and lived and made out with dates and lovers, people who identified one way and then maybe identified another. That one allegedly straight girl who drank too much and wanted to dance up all on you, but you promised yourself no more dance floor social work. <laughs> it could lead to hours of unpaid service. <laughs> Gay boyfriends who would eventually disappear into the crowd. Some of us had codes. Don't leave the club without me, girl. Our safe word will be cucumber. <laughs> Others, we don't worry about They'll be back in a few minutes, or we'll check in tomorrow. The shy ones slowly sipping their beer in the corner, not fully fitting in anywhere. We sang to all the divas. La India, Thalia, Selena, Paulina, Gloria, Sonora Dinamita. Crushed on gay cowboys with their pressed slacks and matching boots, belts and hats, holding each other tight no matter who they went home to and the butchers and boys that gave me dollars to press tips to the chichis of every dancing queen. I'm still not ready to be coherent or make connections. I will never be ready to wake up to this news. I'm trying to keep it moving. Not sure why the world keeps spinning. The church bells keep ringing. I want action instead of wishes. Don't whitewash this story. I need your prayers and thoughts to get more specific and start asking why how he overstayed his visa, leaving the violence in his country for this? Some families can't get here, mothers and fathers seeking humanitarian permissions who just want to mourn their babies. Erasure re-victimizes you. I thought the tears had stopped for now, and then I get that lovely text message from a fellow Jota, and I think about our precious lives and our relationship to the nightlife, where we gossiped and made out and hungered to be looked at and wanted and screamed the lyrics to our favorite songs, passed out condoms, flyers for services, then cheered the girls and boys putting on a show. How the boys accidentally, or maybe not so, would cruise the butch on my arm. And because, man, I've been to plenty of straight bar that I think are just called bars. When the bartender friend of your brothers will point and holler and you and objectify our kisses and you will say nothing and I will have to get rowdy and tell him to get out of my fucking face. And I can't say I've always been intentionally queer. That came with a fight hard won through shyness and intimidation. Took years after kissing enough femme frogs and butch toads. We were not perfect, but at least in the church of La Joteria y Mariconada, I could pull my date close, the tenderest of queers, and she would giggle and say she's too soft to be called butch, and I would say I'll call you whatever pronoun or poetic identifier you want so long as we can make out. <laughs> Queerly beloved, our, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Our stories stretched across bloodlines, backrooms, and borderlines. We're tired of mourning brown kids shot by entitled pigs with guns not meant to stop but to destroy. We shouldn't have to carry arms on hips meant for dancing, pretending that makes us safe. We remember, honor, dance through our worst fears. How do we even have any more tears? Our job is to keep the beat going, because the pulse never stopped, finding love in hopeless places. We're tired of being so resilient. Pero love beats here. Thank you. Mm.